I uh, want to start, Governor, with William. Uh, William writes in from Bloomsburg, who uh, he wants to know why we can't use a driver's license, like a credit card, to vote. The card has a magnetic strip on the back. You could swipe it to identify. Also, the Amish wouldn't need a picture. And he says, see you at the Bloomsburg Fair. And we'll talk, we'll talk fairs a little later on in the show. Well, as, as that's you know, happening I was up there. Week. I don't know if William came yeah. up to me or not. A lot of people did. Some, some potential issues well, with that because the, not everybody well, drives. For, first off, the whole idea is for the people at the desk when you walk in to check the face to the person who's there. not just Because you know, the machine's not going to check make those comparisons if you just swipe. Um, and I suspect that some people would say, well, if they swipe, if I swipe it at the machine, they're going to know who I voted for. And, you know, people don't want that. It's supposed to be a secret ballot, isn't it? Um, but it would also, if we did that, it wouldn't provide for the Department of State voter ID card that, that we've created, college IDs uh, that we've used in this and given the ability to use those, care facility IDs for senior citizens. Uh, if you have an ID from the federal government, some valid form of ID, military IDs, U.S. passport, it wouldn't account for that. So while on an initial look, is oh, well, this kind of makes sense, um, there's a lot of reasons why this would never get through the legislature. And with the elderly sort of being at the center of the debate on voter ID and, and, and their you know, you know, alleged well, inability to, to get, you know, when you get to be a certain age, you're not driving anymore and you're not renewing your driver's license. Have you had to get tell a parent that they couldn't drive anymore? Not yet. Not it's yet. not a lot of fun. <laughs> I don't, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't want to get to that point yeah. at this point. Uh, and I'm not looking forward to somebody telling me I can't drive, <laughs> even though I don't anymore now while I'm governor. Not while you're governor anyway. Uh, Carol, I've kept my insurance though. <laughs> Carol and George write in from Pittsburgh. Uh, Governor Corbett, they say you're a breath of fresh air for PA. Uh, for the last 20 years, we've driven out of state for liquor for the holidays. This includes all neighbors, friends, and relatives. <coughs> Why isn't it clear to the other millions that Pennsylvania loses yearly by not closing liquor stores and privatizing liquor stores uh, like Trader Joe's, Wholesale Foods? And she says you, ha they, you have her vote in the upcoming election. Um, next year, I hope she means. Next year, next year. But uh, this, I wanted to ask about liquor privatization. We talked about those situations, the proposals that didn't go anywhere last June, or that. Oh, and, whoa, whoa, and they whoa, didn't. whoa! Let they me didn't. correct that you. That didn't even come up for a vote. Now that didn't go. Uh, yes, anywhere. it did. Liquor privatization. Liquor privatization has gotten through two committees. It came up for a vote in the House. It got out of the House and over to the Senate. Never happened and, before. And died. So, well, no, no, it didn't die. It's still there. They didn't vote it down. But it got it got caught up in the political wrangling that we saw it, last it, June, for sure. Sure, sure it did. But it's still in the queue. Yeah, and it's not a. So is it going to get a vote? Well, I believe it'll get a vote. Uh, I do believe it'll, it'll get a vote at, at some point in time. Uh, you know, this is not an easy thing to do. We're, we're we're taking one system, beer that's already privatized, and a second system, uh, liquor and wine that's not privatized, and trying to. Uh, get the convenience and the choice for the people of Pennsylvania. I think if you went around and, and, and just asked this question to people, what do you view as privatization? Or what do you view as what you want? Most people would probably say beer and wine and grocery stores. Yeah. Do you agree? Yeah. I, I do. I because be I used to, to as a teenager, I worked in a grocery store, and that's what everyone was looking for, and that was in the 80s. That's exactly yeah. right. And they're still looking. Now, they can find uh, beer in some grocery stores, but not all. Um and and I do want to remind uh, Carol George, I am sure that when they go and they go over and buy in Ohio or West Virginia. But they're observing state when, law, when, right? when they come back, that they're going to the liquor store and paying their tax. Now, okay, let's, let's understand this. 60 to $80 million a year we're losing on border bleed. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know down in the southeast with the stores over in New Jersey right across the bridge and right down 95 yeah. in Delaware, the, you know, a lot of people are doing it. We know that. Uh, it is time for us to get into the 21st century with the rest of, uh, of the country. We're one of only two states that has a system like that. Uh, but we have gotten a, a bill out of the House. Never happened before. It's in the Senate, got it out of committee, and it sits on the floor. Now, Remember, I remind people, this session doesn't end until November 30th right. of next year. Uh, so everybody says, well, it's, you, know, you know, you lost. We didn't lose yet. We're still fighting. 